أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the whole of Quran chapter 2 verse 155 and verse 156 وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشَّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Amongst the most desirable qualities of a human being that is well established and founded across the different religions and across different cultures is the quality or the characteristic of patience. Whenever someone has the quality of patience, we see that they become an individual who is honored in community and honored in society as a man who is a man of morality, as a man who is a man of virtue, and oftentimes as a man who is a man of religion and as a man of God. But unfortunately, we see that the quality of patience is that which is oftentimes very difficult for one to attain. But we see that within the whole of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers us insight in regards to the different types of examinations that we go through in our daily life and how we have to remain patient in the midst of each and every one of these problems. Every human being, regardless of where you're from, what language you speak, what part of the world you live in, go through trials and tribulations, go through specific obstacles. Oftentimes, when we are in school, when we are in college, we are given different types of exams, different types of tests. Sometimes we get multiple choice exams. Sometimes we get exams where we have to write a particular essay, for instance. And we see that the professor, that the teacher is oftentimes, or majority of the time, never going to give us the questions toward that exam. And we have to study hard and eventually perform very well in that examination that we are engaging in. But we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this life. And this life, as we all know, is a test for us, is a test for the believer, is a test for humanity. But interestingly enough, out of the mercy and out of the bounty and out of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He even gives us the subject matter and the questions that we will be tested by. Let us take a look at verse 155 of Surah Al-Baqarah and see what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about our examinations that he is placing upon us. In verse 155, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرْ سَابِرِينَ And we have tested you. And we are testing you. From fear, the first test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the human being is a test of fear. How many people today, they live a life of fear. They live a life where they don't know what is going to happen to them or their family tomorrow. They struggle every single day with this challenge, with this particular obstacle. But when you know that this exam is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to realize that this is a stepping stone to get closer toward Him. Number two, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us oftentimes by hunger. Maybe not us as Muslims living in the West, for instance, because we have economic freedom, we have oftentimes a great deal of opportunity. But when we take a look at the survey of the world today, how many people, they live a life of poverty. They live a life of intense hunger on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't have enough provisions to eat and drink every day, three times or five times a day, as we do, for instance. But this is an exam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places upon humanity. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ Number one, fear. Number two, وَالْجُوءِ Number three, وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ And the struggle of poverty. How difficult is it to attain a halal livelihood these days? How difficult is it to attain enough financial resources to rent an apartment or to purchase a home or to live a life very comfortably? It's extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us to understand and to recognize that we have to realize that these are all tests again to reach our potential and to get closer toward Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often also tests us by our own selves. We see that individuals, they have terminal illnesses. 
They're extremely sick that these type of diseases, these type of illnesses are also a means for us to realize that we need to limit ourselves in terms of realizing who we are and recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-powerful, meaning that these are all means to humble ourselves in front of Him. So we re-begin to revive this revitalization in terms of connection, in terms of connection to His authority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنَقْسَمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسْ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us by our fruit. Some of the Mufassirin they state that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that He's testing us by means of our fruit, meaning that oftentimes He tests us, for instance, if someone owns a farm and by the means of their crops. But another group of Mufassirin state that if we take a look at the style of this particular verse of the Holy Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a trial and a tribulation for us, not by means of our physical fruit, but by means, for instance, of our children. By means of our progeny. Innama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse of the Holy Quran, Innama amwalukum wa auladukum fitna. That surely your wealth and your children are a trial for you. Sometimes a lot of wealth is a trial for an, for an individual. Sometimes little wealth is, is a trial for a particular person, depending on how that individual reacts to his bank account and how much money he makes, whether he's giving it in charity, whether he's spending it in a halal way, whether he's remaining patient if he doesn't have enough, so on and so forth. These are all means by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test us. And also your children, depending on if you have the ability to have children. Some people, their exam is the fact that they're unable to have children. For others, it's the fact that their children, for instance, are disobedient. And they have to remain patient and try to guide them toward the right way. We go ahead and we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries every single individual, but realizing their abilities and potentials. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not place a burden on a particular community, on a particular person that they cannot bear. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often gives us different types of obstacles within our life because He knows that we can bear those obstacles. He does not give us something that we are going to uh, drive ourselves toward committing suicide, for instance. Rather, that the human being, they go through these different trials and they go through these different tribulations in order to perfect their hearts and to perfect their souls and because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we are able to bear those different trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues, in the next verse, verse 156. He states that those individuals, oftentimes they're a group of people, for instance, or we can take a look at it as there are probably two or three different types of people. The first group of people are those who whenever they're in the midst of a trial and tribulation, they begin to fall into despair. And we see that despairing in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the second greatest sin after performing shirk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being a polytheist according to the narrations of the Ahlul Bayt. That falling into despair, not realizing and recognizing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that He's always offering us an avenue out, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْأَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will always offer them a way out. This is one group of people, people who fall into a state of despair. Whenever they're going through any of these trials, whenever they're dealing with the problem of fear or of poverty or difficulty with their children, difficulty in their marriage, whatever the situation may be, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they're one group of people, they completely fall into the state of despair. They become depressed. They lose all hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, but they're another group of people. There's a second group of people who whenever they're going through a particular challenge in their life, they state, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Surely to Allah we belong and to Him is our return. Realizing that this entire dunya, this entire world, this is all a test. This is all a test and we know that whatever Allah gives us, it's from Him and it's for our betterment and for our spiritual development and progression. The, the verse continue the the, the 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 context of the verses continue with verse number one hundred and fifty-seven. And those individuals who remain patient in the midst of all of these tribulations, and give the good news to the patient ones when they're going through a difficulty, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that for those people who state inna lillah wa inna ilayhi ra'jun, recognizing that all of these problems, all of these difficulties, all of these obstacles are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know that they will receive the blessings from their Lord and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And surely wa ula'ika humul muhtadun. And surely they will become amongst the guided ones. My dear brothers and sisters, every one of us go through different types of difficulties in our lives. We all go through different types of trials and tribulations. And when we take a look, we see that there are a number of different trials and tribulations that the human being oftentimes goes through. The first type of difficulty, the first type of obstacle that we go through is what is known as a means to wake us up from our slumber. The human being is often in a state of what is known as the ghafla, forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oftentimes we see in our lives, we live weeks or months or maybe years of our life without any sort of focus, without praying, without fasting, without caring about our religion. You know, maybe we attend the majlis in Muharram and in Ashura, but the day after Ashura, we continue along with our lives. During the month of Ramadan, maybe we, you know, go to the mosque for iftar, we, you know, uh, fast during the holy month, but the day of Eid al-Fitr, we go back to our old ways. And we don't see any progression, we don't see any development in our lives. We say that oftentimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, these types of people, He gives us a certain trial and tribulation to wake us up from our sleep. For instance, the death of a family member. The fact that we have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, for instance. Loss of a job. All of a sudden we see that oftentimes when we're going through these type of difficulties, the human being decides to turn himself back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reflecting and recalling that, wait a minute, for 30 years of my life, for 20 years of my life, for 40 years of my life, I've been a, I have been a disobedient slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps the reason why he's giving me this difficulty, perhaps the reason why he's presented this particular trial or tribulation in front of me today is because he wants me to turn back to him. In the same way that, for instance, that, you know, our school teachers, our professors, you know, a coach of a sports team puts us through a boot camp, puts us through an uh, intense... Uh, you know, effort in terms of work, in terms of study, in terms of whatever it may be, in order to shake us up a little bit, in order for us to turn our direction back toward Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes He presents toward us different types of obstacles so that we turn our attention back toward Him. This is a first type of trial that we have to go through. A second type of trial and tribulation oftentimes that we go through is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to put us through a particular Obstacle in terms of what is known as fitna. We mentioned that verse of the Holy Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna, that surely your wealth and your children are a fitna, are a trial for you. We see that in the Arabic language, the term fitna is a word that is used to explain the process of the purification of gold. Meaning what? That perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same word to mean a trial or a tribulation, because oftentimes we see that we go through these types of difficulties in order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanses our sins. What do we see? That many times those believers in our community, maybe we have a friend or a family member or someone that we know from the workplace or from the masjid, who's a really good human being. He's a moral, ethical individual. But we see that oftentimes he is the man or she is the woman who goes through the most amount of difficulties in their life. Why? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oftentimes put the believer through difficulties? Perhaps it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to cleanse all of their sins and elevate their status closer toward Him. We see, for instance, that the greatest of believers, for instance, companions of Imam al-Husayn like Habib ibn Mudahir, uh, you know, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt themselves, the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they themselves go through a lot of difficulties. It is to elevate their status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, who goes through difficulties like Aba Abdullah, not only going through the challenges of his own life, but seeing what is happening to his family, seeing what is happening to his women and to his children. But Imam al Hussein alayhi salam remains patient in the midst of all of these difficulties, which is what gives Aba Abdullah al Hussein that status in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith states, Al Mu'min Huznun fi qalbihi wa bishrun ala wajhah. That when the human being, when the believer, he goes through difficulties, he remains happy on his face but sad in his heart. He doesn't go out and complain to everyone because he knows that these are all trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the one who remains patient in the midst of these 
intense trials and tribulations in the midst of all of these difficulties. And a third type of obstacle that oftentimes we have to go through is what the ahadith literature coins as al-istidraj, meaning a developmental type of trial and tribulation by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disconnects the disbelievers from Him. Oftentimes we see that trials and tribulations don't only come in the mold of difficulties, often they come in the mold of blessings. For instance, a hadith it states that if an individual does not deal with or does not encounter a musibah, a difficulty once every 40 days, he should know that his faith is weak. He should know that his faith is weak if he does not encounter a difficulty once every 40 days. Take a look at that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe as a means to try us, as a means to test us. When we're going through difficulties in our life, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell Him, Oh Allah, this difficulty and this obstacle that I'm going through, yes, it is difficult, but allow me to remain patient in the midst of this difficulty as opposed to asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take this difficulty away. See the perspective in the mindset of the believer and the disbeliever. We go and we see an individual like Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a man who is, you know, claims to be the Lord of the world. Pharaoh is a man who has all of the riches, he has all of the wealth, he has all of the political authority over his community. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on giving him, keeps on giving him wealth, keeps on giving him power, keeps on giving him respect, keeps on giving him authority. Not because he's blessing Pharaoh, but because he's testing Pharaoh by, the, by all of these blessings to see if Pharaoh is going to remain thankful or no. And of course Pharaoh doesn't. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly gives him those blessings, so there's no way for him to... Um, perform a remedy of all of the sins that he constantly commits in his life. When we see ourselves not going through any difficulties, not going through any sorts of trials and tribulations in our life, we have to sit back and reflect and state, wait a minute. It is the custom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us through these trials and to put us through these tribulations. So we have to realize and recognize and understand that these are okay, but we have to continuously do our very best to remain patient in the midst of all of these. In summary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in part of what is known as his sunan Allah, the divine commandments and legal edicts that he uses to create this universe, has created trials and tribulations as a part and parcel of our makeup. That part of this dunya that we're living in today is mixed with obstacles that we have to overcome. Obstacles like fear, like hunger, like poverty, like uh, sickness, like the loss of children or the lack of children, problems or difficulties with our spouses, with our family, and so on and so forth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear that those individuals who remain patient in the midst of all of these trials and tribulations, they are those who are the most honored in His eyes. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will become, <clears throat> that we will be able to become amongst those who are the recipients of the divine blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to our patience in the midst of, of, of any sort of obstacles. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala tayyibin al-tahirin.